that's what it is. I hope you do I'll give you my heart I love you For a set of memories I hope you do so hey friends, welcome to this week's video. I am back from my trip in Spain and I'm gonna talk about the level eight Voyager 26 inch that I brought with me. This guy has gone through two weeks of damage through planes, trains and other transit. So I definitely have a lot of thoughts about how this performed while I was abroad. Obviously we'll go over sort of how easy this is to clean some of the wheels, but let's start off by unpacking this and showing you what I brought along with my trip and the storage capacity of this guy. So let's open this guy up. <laughs> and explain what I packed. So start with the easy side where I don't have to go into quantification as much, but essentially on the main compartment of the bottom side of the bag, here's where I keep most of my shoes. I generally don't travel with this many shoes, but since I was there for a wedding, kind of had to, especially because we we're going to other cities. I need to do gym shoes, a couple of dress shoes, and just something else to be casual with. So overall, it was very easy. On the top, I put all my coats. So there's a lot of depth to this side. So even after I packed it full, I was still able to layer on coats and things like that. So I was able to put two coats, uh, technically three coats. I just didn't load it in this one because it was getting cold in Boston. So I did three coats, one, two, three, just on top of everything else that I had. Then I also did a camera bag. I talked about this in my first impressions. It's just extra stuff. It also carried like my toothbrush, pills, and other things that I might need um, since my camera was in my backpack, but it did carry my entire like sort of kit for taking pictures and things like that. Uh, toiletry bag, peak design, uh, everything I needed from hair, face, teeth, all that sort of stuff to keep fresh during the trip. Small packing cube, which was most, most of my like sleeping clothes, underwear, socks, all that sort of stuff. Very easy. And then like, as I mentioned, a few pairs of shoes. So I did casual pair slash gym pair. Uh, brown leather shoes for certain events and then tuxedo shoes for uh, the main events of the wedding. So a lot of shoes, again, more than I did. Um, it was also very easy because there's a lot of space here when you put down the divider. Obviously there is that divider if you want some separation, but that allowed me to add other things like gifts and other things that I needed to bring back and I didn't have space for initially. So it did allow me to factor in four gifts. As we move on to this front end panel, I usually don't fill this with anything because it kind of affects the packing, but it was perfect for a couple books. It was really good for the masks. Again, I haven't worn a mask in a while because there's no mandates, but for public transit in Spain, you need them. So it was really good to put like letters, the masks in there, so it's easy to find um, from city to city. But that's kind of what I've had in those. And again, I picked up some more manga in Spanish for my Spanish speaking friends as gifts for Christmas and all that other stuff let's take all that stuff out since i do need to load those other i guess i also got like gloves and things for presents those were also able to fit in that front pouch again this this pouch here is mostly made for or this clear pouch is mostly made for toiletries that might explode because it'll give you that separation but you don't have to use it for that top compartment again there's a little bit less depth to this but i put my clothes in here so i had a medium-sized packing cube. I'll show you the loadout of what is inside of that, as well as a heavy packing cube, which kind of became my toilet, my dirty clothes bin by the end of the trip. But I'll put the overall loadout of what has been in my bag so far. I'll put it up here as I continue talking. And obviously I also have other gifts that I was able to put in with relative ease. So starting this trip, when I did check this in, I got around 41 pounds. However, coming back with all the gifts and things, I was just around the limit of 48 to 49 pounds. Uh, so that all worked out really well. And there's plenty of space. I could overpack this if I really wanted to, to allow for other gifts and go over the limit. However, this fit perfectly, give me enough space to do gifts and anything else that I might have bought on my trip there. 
but let's get into how the wheels performed because I know a lot of people were wondering how that would hold up, especially with me too. I was, there's a lot of cobblestone in Spain, so let's talk about that. So Spain has a bunch of cobbles, not great for rollers, especially some Ikas. I'm doing all right. The big wide handle is helping with stability and uh, the wheels are holding up all right. I'm gonna keep going because my bag didn't break. Not gonna lie, these guys are taking a beating. I wonder if it'll still sound silent after it works. But it's wide handle. Makes it good if you ever need to like pick it up off of a curb. Super stable. <laughs> <laughs> So you might be wondering why Samika is using my bag. It's because her bag sucks and she can't push it. So this level eight is doing a lot better with all these different types of terrains than this travel pro. And I hate it. I hate this thing. Oh, this is Samsonite? Oh, well, I don't know if you know, but mine's a level eight. Hey. The wheels out of the box were amazing and one of the smoothest rides I've felt from a luggage. That sensation maintained throughout the entire trip. Through cobblestones and uneven surfaces, the wheels stayed nimble in movement and surprisingly quiet with the exception of potholes and giant cracks. The construction of the luggage gives the case a nice stable base that rolls evenly and straightly. The rigid case structure and large flat top allow you to easily carry duffels and bags on top without encumbering the stable, smooth and straight roll of the bag. Moving on to the case itself, I chose the bright yellow version because it would be easier to find in baggage claim but also be less boring. This proved to be nice, especially as I watched black bag after black bag pass by waiting for Samika's luggage to swing by. Mine was quite easy to spot out from afar and I didn't have to second guess. However, the bright yellow obviously did get some scuffing but nothing that I minded or I was very obvious from afar. We'll get into the cleaning process later in this video. The case, however, did its job in standing out and protecting my possessions well. I didn't have any bottle leaks and it protected my souvenirs and camera gear without any breakages. However, I do want to talk about the size and structure of this bag. The large flat top and rigid structure made the bag extremely easy to maneuver and also acted as a nice table for coffee, bags, or laptops. However, the large size proved to be a slight issue on trains. On our first train ride, we were a little late boarding, so all of the large storage was taken, and due to the rigid structure, it didn't squeeze on top of other luggage well. I did get creative and find a solution, but if you're using trains in Spain, don't be like us and board early so you ensure that you can get the larger slots first. <sighs> okay, so let's talk about cleaning this guy. I've taken this through a ton of trials and tribulations to my trips. Two weeks, four cities, trains, planes hidden conveyor belts, exchanged a lot of hands, so obviously it does take some travel damage. Not any scratches or dings that would make this undesirable to use in the future. It's mostly just these black cosmetic scuffs that I'll show you in this B-roll. Obviously, it, it took some damage, especially in the corners, just because that's where all of the, you know, sort of brunt of it gets tossed around with. But it all should be relatively easily clean with one to three tools. So we'll start off with a wet rag. This is something that you should just hit the whole thing with just to get some of that dirt to break up and just get all of the initial, you know, film of dirt from your travels off of it. It'll also help you see where the major problem areas are. From that, then you will want to use a very, you know, mild cleaner, household cleaner to sort of use a little bit of elbow grease and get out the rest of that dirt. So this should get you like 80, 90, if not all of the, the, the damage and dirt out of there. Um, the reason why you wanna use a lighter one is because you don't want a more corrosive thing like bleach because it'll you know mess up the colors, it'll start affecting the material. So you want something that's a little bit lighter so that it will you know maintain the structure of your bag. And then lastly, there's gonna be some areas, like I mentioned in the corners that take the brunt of the damage where you still may not be able to get deep enough or you may not be able to clean it up completely and that's where like I've been just using my nails but if you want to maintain your manicure make sure your nails are all pretty still you can also use a soft bristle brush that will that you can use to, like circular motion massage that sort of deep dirt out obviously do not use 
something that's like a, a metal bristle brush because it'll, you know, while this is durable, it may affect the, the pattern there. So just use something a little bit softer that you can, you know, really rub in circles and get that stuff out. So I think between those three tools, you should be able to clean it out relatively well, but let's get started and see how much of the grime I can get off this case. So overall through this cleaning process, I did find that it was relatively easy to clean. However, it did take longer than expected. So it took about 15 minutes for me to get a full clean on it. And mostly the clean solution and rag worked for most of it. There were certain areas which I foresaw like the edges and the corners, which were a little bit more stubborn because that's where the dirt really gets impacted on when it's going through transit. I just had to put a little bit more elbow grease, allow the cloth to sort of soak in on those places so it could break up that packed in debris. I did notice that using the brush did help a little bit, but sometimes I just found that my fingernail, it was a little bit more efficient because like sometimes dirt was just right on top of the diamond and I just didn't flick it off. So that was just a little bit easier. But for the main facades, I was able to clean out all the scuffs. And even on the underside, which I had a lot of scuffs prior, I was able to clean that up relatively easy. And that's actually the cleanest part of the luggage, despite maintaining all of those scuffs during transit. The two problem areas I did see was that in one of the corners, it did actually retain a scratch, which has dirt in it. I probably need a little bit more time to like clean it out, but it did retain a little bit of damage there. Not something I expected. And then on the wheels, they were perfectly fine, no damage there. However, you will notice that on the logo, it does have a little bit of scratching or, or smearing of that logo. So, you know, those are probably the two areas you wanna consider if you're trying to maintain this luggage. If you don't wanna do this cleaning or go through as much, obviously I went for the yellow colorway to be noticeable. However, if you wanted to not clean this as much or just not have it as obvious, going with the blue going with the black is an option for you so in terms of my final thoughts i love this voyager it does everything i need it to do i need a check-in to be easy to find easy to roll with and it does all of those things this yellow is obviously very very distinctive i could find that easily through any terminal i was in the wide handle gave me an extra stable and smooth ride combined with the wheels which took a beating like cobblestone gaps, all the sort of things with cracks that I had to roll over and it still maintained a very, very quiet ride, a smooth rolling when you were in an uh, airport terminal and it was just super nice. And then inside, obviously you have all that space. It is a little bit heavier than some of the competition, but I was able to get under the limit and have ample space for shopping sprees and gift giving and all that sort of stuff. So I could be a little bit more flexible, not worry about finding space for it there's so much space in there that you can be really flexible when you travel but yeah the voyager was something that i did not expect to meet all of my needs and it was a little bit weird but i like how they're switching up the game but the thing that i really like is that this thing is not all that expensive when you look at competitors that are this size you're looking at like 350 plus usually 450 however this guy retails at 270 dollars and with Black Friday coming along, there is a code. I'll put it in the description. You can get this for 215. Obviously, this is the 26 inch version. There's a 28 inch version that has a handle, a little bit more space. But the reason why I think this is perfect for everyone is that this will get you inside your limits relatively easy. You pack this full, it'll be under the 50 generally. So I think this is the perfect size for all of your traveling needs. If you have any questions about this case, definitely put it in the comments. But for now, that's all I have to say about the Voyager. I love this guy. But yeah, I appreciate you guys sticking around for this review. I know that I've sort of been on the travel and luggage game a little bit. I will be getting back to tech, but I do have a few reviews from Spain that I need to get through first. So definitely ask me questions about those things and I'll see you guys on a live shortly. But as always, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love into my OGs. Thank you for being patient with me. I know this is not exactly what you guys were asking for, for the content that I usually shoot, but you know, with travel, I need to be a little bit more creative. So thank you for being patient and sticking with me and watching all these things. It, your support helps drive this channel and what we do as well as helps it grow. And we're doing pretty well on that front. But uh, thank you guys. As always, appreciate you. Peace. Thank you.